Republican Congressman Daryl Issa of California. Congressman Issa, um, to be serious here, I mean, Glenn Beck called President Obama racist and said the president hates all white people. He's, he's used Nazi and fascism imagery to associate that with the Obama administration. Would Glenn Beck have been your choice to deliver the keynote speech at this event? Well, I always believe that everybody that comes to one of these conferences that has this audience is a keynote speaker. Uh, I certainly think you can focus on one person's comments, but I think it's important to focus on everyone, everyone from Vice President Cheney to uh, every conservative member of Congress that's been invited has accepted. So it's a, it's a pretty broad group. It's the largest CPAC uh, convention ever. Well, what about, I mean, last year, I mean, it was Rush Limbaugh who gave the, uh, the keynote speech. So clearly there's an alliance between conservative uh, talkers and this conference. Is that a good thing for the image of the GOP and conservatives in your estimation? Well, first of all, I'm on NBC because I want to give voice to conservative values on all the stations. Uh, I think you can look at Fox or you can look at uh, Clear Channel and you can say they are voices for conservatives and many conservatives listen to them. But as a conservative congressman, I want to make sure that my voice is heard by people who may not have considered that we're a viable alternative in direction and agenda to the present one in Washington. Well, and look, we wholeheartedly agree because that's why uh, we always appreciate having you on. Um, what is your, you think, should be the driving issue for conservatives at this conference, in your estimation? I think the driving issue should be returning our economy to a, a, a basis under which we can compete globally. Uh, it's very clear that just spending cuts in Washington is not enough. Certainly just tax cuts are not enough. That America is beginning to lose its competitive edge. We can get it back, but conservatives have to be part of an agenda, broad agenda, that gets back our conservative advantage, some of which will be reigning in government, but some of which is, are going to be, in fact, incentivizing uh, people to use their liberty in a productive way to be competitive around the world, because otherwise our children will not enjoy the kind of economy that we enjoy. Congressman Issa, you've been leading a bipartisan effort to try to dig into what's been happening, to what happened with AIG and, and the sort of the funny deals or the strange money that floated around. AIG, they've been refusing to turn over emails. Same with the New York Fed. Where does that stand, and, and what's, what are your plans next for that investigation? Well, we're continuing to work with uh, Chairman Towns on a bipartisan basis. We're subpoenaing additional documents. Uh, the chairman has indicated that he will subpoena if he isn't given full cooperation, that this investigation doesn't end until we're completely satisfied that we know everything that went on, particularly at a time in which the Fed would like to have less transparency and more authority. Congressman Issa, before I let you go, um, the big story today, Tiger Woods is going to make a public statement shortly about um, his, I don't know how you want to describe him, but if you were advising Tiger Woods, what would you tell him to do today? Well, David, I've been advising indirectly Toyota about, about how to get their story behind them, and it's going to be their chairman coming to the U.S. and talking about his vision to fix Toyota's problem of being slow to fix uh, uh, basic problems that have occurred in safety. For Tiger, it's the same thing. He needs to get ahead of the story. He needs to talk about proactively what he's going to do. He can't apologize enough for what he did in his personal life that has embarrassed him and his family. What he can do is talk about what he's going to do to leverage his fame and fortune to do good things going forward. I hope that's what he'll do at a conference today. I know he can do a lot of good for America. A lot of people look to him for positive leadership. Certainly he hasn't been demonstrating it lately, but he has an opportunity to talk about how he's going to leverage his fame and fortune for the good of people who admire him. There are so many uh, lawmakers, uh, politicians who are used to sort of speaking publicly like yourself and can sort of get up in front of the microphones and, and try to explain things. For somebody who's, uh, who's, who's used to sort of being uh, essentially controlling things his way, can you, I wonder if you sort of might think about uh, or, or sort of give us some perspective on how difficult is it when you have cameras essentially around the world who are going to be essentially beaming your statement everywhere around the world to deal with something like this. How difficult is it to deal with when you're that person that has to get up in front of the microphone? Right after that.
Well, having been a, a freshman politician many years ago uh, and being attacked for wrongdoing that I was involved in as a, as a young man in my teens, uh, my initial reaction was to, to hide, to go away, to have others talk for me. And Tiger Woods, I think, had the same situation. But given reflection and advice, you come out, you admit that, you, that you've done things wrong, but you say, who am I today and what will I be in the future? And I think that Tiger Woods has had enough time and enough good advisors around him that that's the only thing he can do that's going to put this story behind him. California Republican Congressman Daryl Issa. Congressman Issa, always a pleasure to have you on. We look forward to having you in studio you, next David. time, but enjoy the CPAC conference. Will do. Thank you. Thank you.